Effective leaders do not operate on their own. Their past experiences and learning are founded upon their relationships with others. Their ability to provide adequate resources for their followers is attached to their ability to interact with others outside of the group they lead. The number and quality of these relationships is critical and is likely a major contributing factor to their rise as a leader in the first place. This group of relationships is often referred to as their network. The quality of these relationships is often quantified as the amount of social capital possessed through this network. As Eagley and Carly note, those who create social capital through good relationships with colleagues both inside and outside of the organisation are more likely to rise to positions of authority. These relationships provide access to information, resources, opportunities and greater control over external decisions that may affect their followers. Joining and participating in networks is the mechanism by which social capital is generated and sustained. Social capital plays a critical role in leadership in several ways. Leaders who are well connected and well respected in their firms or industry can bring new skills, contacts and ideas to their team and to their organisation. Now, Happyhood and Goshal argue that the greater the social capital of a leader, the greater the chance that they will have access to the strategic ideas of industry colleagues, customers and the like. Leaders who possess a wider network of people that can attest to their leadership ability are more likely to be able to influence key internal and external stakeholders in the allocation of scarce resources in favour of their vision. Finally, a leader's social capital plays a key role in acquiring future leadership roles which offer greater opportunity and responsibility, since there are a greater number of people who are willing to attest to the leader's skill. However, the leader is faced with a dilemma in this regard, since they need to balance recognition of the followers' efforts with the contribution the leader made to the team's success. Additionally, it cannot be assumed that others in the organisation are paying attention or communicating your success and that of your team to those who may control the allocation of resources or who may be in a position to decide your leadership and career development. This is where balanced self-promotion becomes a critical leadership skill, but more on this later. Networking is often a misunderstood term. A leader's networks are only valuable to the extent to which the leader is seen as credible, trustworthy and capable to those in the network. Obviously, the greater the number of influential people who value an individual in their work, the greater will be the number of opportunities which will flow from that network. Therefore, the relationships which tend to produce opportunities are not superficial ones. Rather, they are the ones in which the individual has invested significant time and emotional energy. It is for this reason that leaders need to be purposeful in how they devote their time and their energy in growing and maintaining their network. Executive leaders have reported that their most valuable networks and those that produce the most valuable social capital comprise the following in descending order. Colleagues in other offices or divisions. Previous colleagues, especially those with whom they have had shared success. Industry associations upon which they have served. Community, school or not-for-profit committees upon which they have also served and university or school alumni. Therefore, effective networking, insofar as building valuable social capital, is not just a matter of handing out business cards or having short conversations, but rather it is a purposeful, long-term investment in relationships with key individuals.